Welcome to All Things JavaScript. In this video, we're going to talk about a very simple concept, but a very important concept to understand. And that is how are variables and objects in JavaScript passed? Is it by value or is it by reference? So is the actual value passed when we assign a variable or an object to a new variable? Or is it simply a reference? Now, the short answer is simple, but may lead to some confusion. In JavaScript, all things are passed by value. However, in the case of an object, the value that is passed is a reference to that underlying object. So with primitive values, the actual value is passed. With objects, the value that is passed is a reference to that underlying object. So let's illustrate that concept really quick. And then we'll take a look at some code examples. To start off with, what happens when we declare a variable and, sign and assign a primitive value to that variable? Well, in memory, there is a location that is created. And then that value is placed within that location. Now, if we then copy that to a new variable, as we see with this statement, what happens at that point? Well, another location is created in memory and the value is assigned to that location. So we have two different locations in memory when we're dealing with primitive values. Now that's different when we're dealing with objects. So here we have a statement that is creating an object. When that statement executes, a location in memory is created for it. And then the properties of that object are placed in that location. So the object itself is contained there. However, if we then copy that object, we're copying it to a new obj1 variable. What happens at that point? Well, a new location is not created. It simply receives a reference to the original location. So both obj and obj1 are pointing to the same location in memory. Now let's take a look at a few code examples that illustrate this. Now here in Sublime, I've declared some variables. At the top, I've declared num1, assigned it a value of 10, and then declared num2 and assigned it num1. Then I created an object it has two properties in it, num and name. And I assign that object to another variable, obj2. Now let's go ahead and execute this code. And then I'm going to open the console and do a few things to illustrate this point of by value and by reference. So let's refresh this page, open the console. Now first, to take a look at the two num variables, that contains 10 and num2 contains 10. Now what happens if I increment num1? Display num1, that is now 11. Num2 remains at 10. Therefore, two separate locations in memory. Now let's take a look at the objects. So obj1, just look at the whole thing. There we have the two properties, num10 and name Stephen. obj2, same thing. Now let's go ahead and increment the num property in obj1. So I'll do that with the dot operator. Now let's display obj1. It now shows 11. How about obj2? It shows 11 as well. So obj2 was changed because it is a reference to the location, just like obj1 is a reference to the location. So once we change that location, it changes it for all references to that location. So obj1.num, 11. obj2.num, 11. Now, what about a function? Well, since 
functions in JavaScript are objects, we can expect the same sort of behavior. So let's add a function to our code here. And we'll simply have it logged to the console obj1.name. That's all we'll do. And then create a second variable and assign it fun1, which is the function we declared. All right, let's refresh again. Now, if we look at fun1, I'm just looking at it. I didn't place any parentheses, so it's not going to execute it. I just want to see what it contains. There we can see the code for the function. If we look at fun2, code for the function. Obviously, if we executed both of them, they would all return the same value or the name property of the object. Now, let's say we wanted to attach a property to this function. Let's say we wanted to create an invoked property that we were going to set to true because say we invoke this function. So we're going to set it to true. Now if I display fun1 invoked, that displays true. What happens if we display fun2 invoked? Well, as you probably guessed, that displays true as well. When we added that property to the function, it shows up in both our fun1 reference and our fun2 reference because they are references to the memory location. So it changes it in one spot. All the references retrieve that same information. One more thing to, to try to illustrate this. Let's create a third function. And this is going to take a parameter. And we will simply log that parameter to the console whatever is passed in. All right, let's refresh again. This time, we will call fun3, and I'm going to pass in obj1. And there we see the object displayed. All right, now, jump back. What would happen if we added another line here? So now we're changing whatever is passed in. We're changing the num property of that. And I'm going to pass in an object. So what happens to that object? Let's go ahead and refresh. Invoke fun3 again, passing in obj1. And it displays the object with the num pro property incremented. So it is 11. Now, did that change it for obj2? As you probably guessed, yes, it did. Because once again, it's simply a location. So it doesn't matter how we pass that object around. It is still a reference to a memory location where primitive values, the actual value is passed. So the rule in JavaScript is that all things are passed by value. But when you are dealing with objects, the value that is passed is a reference to that underlying object. And because objects are mutable, meaning you can change them, when we pass an object into a function or pass it anywhere and make a change to it, that change shows up in all variables that reference the same object. You can view other videos from all things JavaScript by accessing the video in the middle. You can subscribe to our channel by clicking on the link on the left. You can visit our website for more resources on JavaScript by clicking the link on the right. Thanks for watching.